Avery, you can start the slideshow.
The Lord be with you. Thank you, and <clears throat> special thank you to the parents of our high school graduates who provided the pictures, and to Amber, our youth director. She does such a great job putting those slides together, and we are going to honor those graduates uh, at the late service today, so we'll have a special time where they will get to share some thank yous to their parents and those who've been an influence for them as well. There is an insert that has that information about what the, the kids are doing uh, post-graduation, but also uh, Amber has a display out there where you can uh, sign your name on, on their picture if you'd like, and there's some hand sanitizer there too, so I encourage you to hand sanitize before you uh, grab the pen, and just to continue to do that. Uh, we are going to, at late service, because it's going to be fuller, we're going to ask people to wear masks throughout the service today, but you can take yours off. We have enough space to stay spaced out safely, I think, at this service, so we'll do it that way. It's really a month of celebrations. Uh, July 23rd is Pastor Henschel's 60th anniversary of his ordination, so on July 26th, we're going to have a special prayer to honor him at the services that day. We'll also do a uh, Hard shower. We can't really do a full-blown reception because of the COVID stuff, but if you want to provide a card, uh, uh, plan on that for July, Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, July 26th. And then August 7th is Val Reed's 100th birthday, and uh, her family is going to do a celebration for her on Saturday, August 1st. So if you would like to, we'd like to do maybe a, a big card shower for her uh, and take them there all in mass. I mean, you can mail them too if you want to, but uh, if you want them to be delivered from Messiah here, we're not yet sure what all we're going to do for her to be able to do it safely. I think Miles is going to record some old hymns, that uh, favorite hymns to play. Uh, maybe we'll do a drive-by uh, birthday celebration too, but... If you're going to bring a card to church, if you can make sure it gets here by Friday, uh, July 31st. That way we can take them with uh, when we go over there on Saturday, uh, August 1st. So lots to celebrate. We are continuing our uh, the I Am series, and, and today it's uh, I Am the, the Good Shepherd. And uh, I've used this staff. Warren Cadwell gave, gave that to me a few years back. It doesn't have the curve on it. I thought, well, maybe I'll have to get the steam thing going and maybe do the bend on that so it looks like the shepherd's book. But uh, we're familiar with the staff. I don't know that we're that familiar with the rod. So uh, I made a rod yesterday like this. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the, in the sermon. But this was the defensive weapon of the shepherd, and this was uh, what the shepherd used to lead, guide, and, and rescue the sheep. And when Jesus says that to us, I am the good Shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. May we really take that to heart today. And our, our apologetic question is, uh, did God really die? And so we'll look at that today. And may the Spirit bless us. So uh, let's, let's stand and join in our uh, opening hymn. It's hymn 740, I Am Jesus' Little Lamb.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to kneel, or you can be seated, as we take a moment in time of personal Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise and continue with the Kyrie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heaven, almighty God and Father, worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory, for Jesus Christ, only Son of the Blessed Good Shepherd, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear your voice in them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and evermore follow you. 
the blessed hope of everlasting life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Maybe see that we'll hear the first reading, and then we're going to chant uh, responsively with Miles canting uh, Psalm 23 before we hear the epistle. Our first reading this morning is from the New Testament in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 through 13, and in regards to compassion of the Lord. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and shall succeed in the faith in which I stand. The you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall be forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall come. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the mother, and it shall make an end to the wood, and everlasting sign it shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from our first. as sons, by whom you cry, Abba, Father, 
The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, no heirs of Christ, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may also be glorified with Him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise and join in. Hallelujah. according to St. John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And together we join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven. It's good to see so many young at heart people here this morning, since my young ones are um, all watching at home. Um, as I was looking at the idea of the Good Shepherd, it was really easy to think of some things of what a not Good Shepherd might say. And I um, pulled my children and one of their friends yesterday and I came up with some ideas of my own, and here are some things I thought maybe a not-so-good shepherd might say. First, let's, let's go play by that cliff over there. <laughs> not, not the best idea. Or, ooh, that looks like some baby wolf cubs. Maybe we should go play with them. They're pretty cute. Um, maybe you would not hear a good shepherd say something along the lines of, ooh, that area over there looks scary, but it's the only way we have to go. So um, I'm going to let you guys go that way, and I'm going to go over here and take a different route that's not as scary. Or perhaps a not-so-good shepherd would say, you know, I, I'm tired, it was a late night last night, 
And I know you're thirsty, so why don't you sheep go ahead down to the river over there, and I'm going to take a nap over here. Now, some of those might sound very familiar because they came right out of exactly what the Good Shepherd does not do in Psalm 23. When we read or listened to Psalm 23 this morning, we heard things like, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He takes me and leads me to the quiet water. Now, Pastor's going to take a look at those tools that he has for leading. So I don't want to look at those yet, but the idea that he leads us instead of just says, hmm, you're on your own, that's scary, or you're on your own, I'm tired. He doesn't do that. The good shepherd instead gives us things to guide us. He left us with his word to guide us. He leads us, leaves us with pastors and teachers to guide us. He leaves us with our parents to guide us. And ultimately, that last verse in Psalm 23 is, he brings us to himself in heaven because he laid down his life. And that's said in both our gospel today and in Psalm 23. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And we can be thankful that we have a good shepherd watching out for us and not one that leaves us on our own. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of sending your Son to us to be our Good Shepherd. Um, please forgive us when we fail to follow him, and please be with us in times when we follow him and we struggle, and it's not the easy path. We thank you for the guidance that he gives us and the love that he gives us every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Katie. We continue. We're going to sing verses 4 and verse 6 of Christ, the Word of God, and Please for verse 6. Probably some of the most familiar verses in all of Scripture, I think maybe John 3.16 and Psalm 23, 
are well known even by people who aren't necessarily believers in Christ is the good shepherd. But what a powerful message, what a powerful I am that Christ gives to us. And David himself, you know, who was a shepherd, had a staff and and, uh, knew what it was to have the shepherd's rod to protect the sheep, said some really important words too. And I want to share again verse 4 of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If you grab your bulletin there and look at the cover, you see, as I said in the welcome today, our, our what is real is death is real. My death and your death and the death of of human beings is real, but also today, the death of God, that God in the second person of the Trinity and our our Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God who became the Son of Man, really did die. And he had to die to pay that price, that penalty for our sins so that he could lead us to be with him forever. Death is real. And because death is real, we definitely need a shepherd. We need someone to lead us and guide us uh, through life, but also, as David said so beautifully, through the valley of the shadow of death to life forever. Now, because death is also real, we also need not just any old shepherd. The hired hand, as we heard in the gospel reading today, Probably not going to do because they don't really truly care for the sheep since they're simply a hired hand. In fact, one of the things I'm going to talk about today is we have, in fact, all kinds of shepherds, if you want to call them, or as Katie said, not so good shepherds that that would want to lead us, that would want us to listen to their voices, but they would lead us into very dangerous places. They would lead us uh, away from the good shepherd. And they would lead us where it would be very easy for our adversary, the devil, to devour us. So I actually want to read, I'm going to set this down for a second. And I want to commend to you, uh, this is a beautiful book. This actually was first printed in, in 1970. I'm going to hold it up for the folks watching online. It's, it's a book by Philip Keller, and it's called A Shepherd's Look at the 23rd Psalm. You can probably read this in, in an hour. It's only... I mean, 140 pages, but it's very small. And Philip Keller uh, grew up in East Africa. Uh, His folks were missionaries, and he grew up around uh, tribesmen that were uh, shepherds. So not quite the same as the Middle East shepherds, but very similar in a lot of ways. And in fact, for several years, he himself was a shepherd. And later on in life, he became a lay minister and served in a church. So... He got to be a literal shepherd of sheep, and then as a lay pastor, I should mention this last week, that's what the word pastor means, it means shepherd. The Lord used him as an under-shepherd to help shepherd his people. But I want to read about, um, as I said, most of us are familiar with the staff, but I want to focus on on the rod here, and I'm going to kind of hold this up while I read it. Now, in Africa, uh, they have a special name for the shepherd's rod. Uh, knob. <laughs> Shepherd's rod, it's a knob carry. Have you heard that term? Ever heard that term before? So here's, he describes uh, how the shepherd uh, fashioned and chose uh, the rod that he would have. He'd say, each shepherd boy from the time he first starts to tend his father's flock takes, a spe- takes special pride in selecting a rod and staff exactly suited to his own size and strength. He goes into the bush and selects a young sapling which is dug from the ground. This is carved and whittled down with great care and patience. The enlarged base of the sapling where the trunk joins the root is shaped into a smooth, rounded head of hard wood. The sapling itself is shaped exactly to fit the owner's hand. And I have, so I, I, now I didn't use the tools I'm sure that they use now. I used a belt sander on mine to make a little hand grip here and, and I had to kind of chuckle because later on I'm going to talk about how the shepherd leads and feeds the sheep, but also bleeds for the sheep. 
and uh, I got my hand a little too close to the uh, belt sander. So I, as your shepherd, I was bleeding for you all yesterday, <laughs> too. And I don't recommend that. But they shape it, and, it and, and then here's what he says. They start practicing because they actually use it as a throwing tool to throw at sheep when they're in dangerous, dangerous area, but also when predators come. So here's how he describes that. Um, he shapes it, uh, and then he spends pra hours practicing with the club, learning how to throw it with amazing speed and accuracy. It becomes his main weapon of defense for both himself and the sheep. I used to watch the native lands having competitions to see who could throw his rod with the greatest accuracy across the greatest distance. The effectiveness of these crude clubs in the hands of a skilled shepherd was a thrill to watch. The rod was, in fact, an extension of the owner's own right arm. It stood as a symbol of strength, power, and his authority in any serious situation. The rod was what he relied on to safeguard both himself and his flock when in danger. And it was, furthermore, the instrument he used to discipline and correct any wayward sheep that insisted on wandering away. So we're going to look at this today, how uh, our good shepherd is so much better than a hired hand. And that's what I put in the sermon notes there. You know, the hired hand doesn't really care that much. If, if danger comes, he's like, well, they're not paying me enough for this. I am out of here. Not a very good shepherd indeed. And how important that is to have a shepherd who leads us. Because we are attacked and we have the onslaught of what I like to call the big three. In fact, if you want to grab your hymnal there, I'm going to grab mine up here, and open up to page 323. Uh, the catechism, Luther's small catechism, is there in the front part of the hymnals. And on uh, page 323, you'll find the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, which we're going to pray in a little bit. And this, I want us to read together the, the sixth petition. Or excuse me, it's, I guess it's 324, page 324, okay? Which is, and lead us not into temptation, which is a good petition to focus on when we're focusing on how the shepherd's role is to lead us. So let me read what does this mean, and then I want you to read the explanation with me. Lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? Together. God tempts no one. We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory. And of course, what Luther recognizes is what David recognized, the only way we can really overcome any temptation is we need God. We need the Spirit to be leading us. We need the Good Shepherd to be uh, calling us with his voice. And as Katie said, she held up her Bible and said, you know, God has given us his word. That's where we get to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. And, it, and it's very important because if you know anything about sheep, you know they are completely defenseless. They have no way to defend themselves against any adversary, and, and they're not the smartest of creatures either. <laughs> they get themselves into all kinds of trouble situations, situations that they can't often get themselves back out of. But they definitely have predators that are coming after them, and, and Luther, in the explanation, talked about two of those that come at us from the outside. The devil and the world. And then we also are led astray even by our own sinful nature, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Think about that. How the devil, in fact, you know, his, we learned last week, we reminded that his name means deceiver, that he wants to lead us astray, he wants to lie to us, he wants to say, oh, there's really good pasture over here, or oh, you don't need that shepherd, go ahead, you go off where, where you want to go. And so Satan, the deceiver, is one of the big three tempters. And then the world itself, you know, even in our culture today to say, well, God doesn't even exist. Or why are you wasting your Sunday morning to gather and, and praise a God who's not even there? 
But the reality is God is real. We looked at it the very first week when Jesus said, I am, I am. Even before Abraham was, I am. Our God is real. And Jesus, the Son of God, chose to step into this world, into our flesh, so that he could die for us. And we're very thankful. And in many ways, I think about his word as sort of that rod that, that helps defend us from the attacks of, uh, of Satan. Remember, I said, Paul, you know, in Ephesians 6, he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And, and, and again, most of the pieces of armor are defense. But the offensive weapon is the sword. He says, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the word of God. Again, how thankful we are that we have that word of God to, to help lead us and guide us, to defend us. And also, sometimes the shepherd has to use the rod to correct or to discipline. So, he defends with the rod, but he also, he also disciplines with the rod. And it's been a while since I've read through the whole book, but I think it's in this book that I read that sometimes if a shepherd has a sheep, that is prone to wander, like we sing in one hymn, I, I am prone to wander, he says he may even have to break the leg of the sheep so that it can't go off and get itself in, in deadly harm's way. And, you know, the scriptures talk about discipline and says no discipline is pleasant at the time. But it says we think about our earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them and and the scripture says, how much more our loving Heavenly Father should we trust Him? Or to put it in our text today, how much more should we trust the Good Shepherd who is willing to sacrifice Himself for us when He does discipline us when we are going astray? So, I put it's also best when He, the Good Shepherd, leaves and we, the sheep, follow. And that's where the, the third tempter comes from. It comes from here. My sinful self, my own sinful nature, wants to do what I want to do, wants to go where I want to go, even though that's not always what's best for me. And the great thing about the Good Shepherd is he does know what is best. And it is always best for us when he leads and we follow. And we're going to see and be reminded of, too, as David said, he even leads us through through the valley of the shadow of death. So he died, he led that way, but death couldn't hold him, could it? That's what we celebrate on, on Easter, and we say, he is risen, and then what was the refrain? He is risen indeed, alleluia. And that's important too, that we hear his voice, because here I'm gonna pick up the staff, rather than the rod. And this is when we think of the, the shepherd out front, leading and the, and the sheep following behind and, and how he says the sheep hear my voice the sheep know my voice and the shepherd knows us and he's the one who's out front leading the way to that blessed life eternal life and salvation with him forever now uh, I wish my staff here did have the crook on it because the other thing is the shepherd doesn't just lead us so we talk about it. he does feed us and he does lead us but he also often has to rescue the sheep. And I didn't really know this until I was reading that book when it said the word ca cast sheep. Have you ever heard of that? Or a cast animal? Uh, with sheep, what happened, a cast sheep is a sheep that's gotten flipped over on its back, you know, kind of like a turtle. <laughs> and it's, it's sitting there and for different reasons, it can't get itself uprighted. And in fact, in the book, he says sometimes they're too fat. Sometimes they have too much wool. Or uh, sometimes they just get wedged in there and they don't have the ability to flip themselves over. And, and he talks about how uh, pride can do that for us too. Uh, or uh, just comfort, the fact that they, oh, they sit there and then they realize they can't get up. And it says in a hot day, a sheep can die in a few hours, uh, but it could last days. It's bleeding there, bleeding for the shepherd to come and rescue it. So that's the crook. Often the crook would be what the shepherd would use to hook the sheep and and to rescue it. And of course, when we heard in the, in the uh, beautiful, beautiful gospel words today, I want you to hit, catch this. Not one time, not even two times, 
not even three, not even four, but five times in today's gospel reading, Jesus said, I lay down my life. I lay down my life for my sheep. He was willing to bleed for us that we could be rescued, that we could know that ultimate blessing. And so at the end, it says, you know, and, and David, and I think why Psalm 23 is so comforting, why we often will read it at a funeral is, knowing that we are in the Good Shepherd's hands, it gives us two real blessings, rest and peace. And rest is very interesting, by the way, about, about sheep. And he describes this in there. Uh, first of all, if sheep are, are scared, they won't eat and they won't drink. So they could start, if they were fearful, you know, that predators were around. So that's the importance of having the shepherd there. They have to feel that they are safe before they will eat. And when the shepherd leads them to still waters, that's important too, because sheep also won't drink by rapids. If the water's running and it's too noisy, that scares them too, and they won't even drink. So they need to find a place where there's calm waters so that they can be fed, so that they can be nourished, so that they can receive the water they need. And we could say Jesus, as we're going to hear, as we heard a little while ago, I am the bread of life. He is the one who truly feeds us, but he is the one who really gives rest and peace for our souls. And Philip Keller writes about peace uh, in this book, too. Uh, his wife died of cancer, and he shares this thought in, in one of the chapters he said, I was keenly aware of this consolation when my wife went to higher ground. He was talking about the shepherd leading the uh, sheep up to the high pastures and enjoying that there and using that for the image of going to be with God in heaven. For two years, we'd walked through the dark valley of death, watching her beautiful body being devoured by cancer. As death approached, I sat by her bed, her hand in mine. Gently, we passed through the valley of death. And then he goes on and says this, During my wife's illness and after her death, I could not get over the strength, solace, and serene outlook imparted to me virtually hour after hour by the presence of God's gracious spirit himself. It was as if I was being repeatedly refreshed and restored despite the most desperate circumstances of all, all around me. Unless one has actually gone through such an experience, it may seem difficult to believe. In fact, those who claim they could not face such a situation. But for the man or woman who walks with God through these valleys, such real and actual refreshment is available. And you know, we have the ministry here of Grief Share, and that's part of the idea is those who've been through loss, uh, the Spirit can use them to come alongside of someone who's dealing maybe with a more recent loss. Uh, and share that comfort, that peace, and that rest that the, the Good Shepherd has given to them. He says, most of us do not want valleys in our life. We shrink from them with a sense of fear and foreboding. Yet in spite of our worst mis misgivings, God can bring great benefit and lasting benediction to others through those valleys. Let us not always try to avoid the dark things, the distressing days. They may well prove to be the way of greatest refreshment to ourselves and those around us. That's what I want you to really take home. And next time you read Psalm 23 and you read verse 4, pay special attention to the word through. Through the valley of the shadow of death. See, Jesus didn't stay in that tomb. He went through the tomb to life everlasting. And you and I will go through death and through our place of rest to life everlasting as well. And so in that verse, it's very powerful. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But of course, the end of Psalm, 20, or Psalm 23 is so beautiful too. Verse 6, because it reminds us what gives us peace and comfort and rest right here and right now is the fact that the shepherd is with us here and now but also there in heaven always with him forever for i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever 
And here's how he, in the closing pages of the book, he says, Sometimes I feel we Christians should be much more like this. We should be proud to belong to Christ. Why shouldn't we feel free to boast to others of how good our shepherd is? How glad we should be to look back and recall all the amazing ways in which he has provided for our welfare. We should delight to describe in detail the hard experiences through which he has brought us. And we should be eager and quick to tell of our confidence in our good shepherd. We should be bold to state fearlessly that we are so glad we are his. By the contentment and serenity of our lives, we should show what a distinct advantage it is to be a member of his household, of his flock. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And may his peace, the peace that passes all of our human understanding, may it guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Again, thanks for your continued prayers of support and tithes and offerings and, and gifts to help support our ministry. The offering plates are there. You can leave your gifts there as you leave today. And uh, in our prayers today, if we uh, let's stand as we lift up our petitions to our Good Shepherd. Mentioned already, we want to have a special prayer as we will at late service for our graduates. Uh, also, uh, Mike Schultz underwent a uh, procedure on his heart on uh, Thursday, and it went well, so we rejoice. Uh, got good re progress report from that. Uh, Dave Giles was here last Sunday, and he mentioned he and Alice are, uh, she's out at Concordia right now, uh, but they're going to be moving up to uh, North Edmond, be a little bit closer to, uh, to the kids, so just a blessing for him and, and others who deal with people, uh, you know, their loved ones with long-term illness, uh, in her case, dealing with uh, some dementia issues. But let us pray. Gracious Good Shepherd, we come to you and rejoice that because you lay down your life for us, because you died for us, because you rose for us, we know that death is real. Your death was real Christ, but also so is your resurrection, as we will hear next Sunday. May that truth give comfort to Pastor Henschel and Shirley and their family as they mourn the death of Pastor's sister-in-law Helen and his cousin Delisle. May it also be a comfort to Tim and Kim and Stephanie and the rest of the Schroeder family mourning the passing of their mother, Sonia, and also for Janice and Rachel and Cindy mourning the death of their father, Wilbur. Father, we do rejoice as uh, David speaks in the psalm of you anointing my head with oil and how that provide healing for the wounds of the sheep. And we give thanks for all the ways you provide healing for us through the wonder of medicines and the skills of doctors and nurses and surgeons. Thank you for successful procedure for Mike. Just bless him and help his heart to function well. We also lift up Royce to you, Royce Frank's brother, as he recovers from his fall. We lift up uh, Bobby and Jennifer Kesey's uh, relative Miller as he battles leukemia. Uh, be with Cindy Hinkle as she awaits her knee surgery next month. We pray for relief of pain in this waiting time. Continue to be with Dorothy and Loris and Skeets, Al, Jerry, Shalen. Sabrina and Karen Franks, Jack Gator, Kevin Molsness, and Susie Johnston as they recover from their surgeries. We also pray that the treatments that Debbie Peasley and Carson Peterson and Kyle Swisher and others battling cancer are receiving can bring healing to their bodies, Lord, according to your great uh, will. We also rejoice with our six uh, high school graduates, Elijah and Abby, Connor and Patrick, Maya and Paige, bless them as they take another step in that journey of faith with you as their good shepherd. We rejoice too uh, uh, as later this month Pastor Henschel celebrates 60 years serving as your under shepherd and as we rejoice with him and Shirley giving thanks for his ministry in our midst but also in the other congregations he has served and and also we anticipate rejoicing with Val Reed as she celebrates a hundred years of walking with you Lord 
So we pray all these things, gracious Good Shepherd, as we pray, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close with shepherd, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us in 7 11. said I am the good shepherd and I have other sheep that are not of this fold I must bring them also that they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock one shepherd therefore we go forth to celebrate and share Christ's love hope and peace with all people go in his peace and serve the Lord thanks be to God